So we've got a few buttons on top of this. We have got a plus and a minus, which should be for the exposure. This should be an auto focus button as well, so you should tap that and it should auto focus. We've also got this auto focus as well with an S and a C. Uh, not 100% sure what that does yet, but we'll soon find out what it does do. Right, as you can see, we've got these bolts as well. So if we unscrew the bolt, as you can see, that allows you to just adjust the head. And obviously, if we tighten that back up, that's it. It's a lot more difficult to move that head now. It's just a standard USB connector as well to connect it to a PC, a Mac or a Chromebook. So on the item we've got a bolt at the bottom there. We've got another one halfway up. And we've got the one at the top there which is to allow you to move the head. This is the camera here as well. So on the Impivo website, this is the compatible software list. So we've got the Impivo Visualizer, which is what we've currently got installed. You can use it in Skype, you can use it on Google Hangouts, GoToMeeting, Camtasia, and OBS. So anybody who's into Twitch streaming, YouTube streaming, Mixer streaming will know exactly what OBS is. So this is the Apivo Visualizer software which we've just downloaded. This is available from the Apivo website. So I've just got this sheet of paper that's in front now and we'll quickly run through the options that we've got. So this first one allows us to select a camera which is the camera we're using there, the V4K. Uh, you've got the option to change the contrast and the hue on there as well. So just quickly go through there so you get the idea of what it does. And go, uh, go roughly around there. We've got zoom on this software as well so we can magnify quite a lot. So if I pull that that amazing drawing that I've done into view there, so uh, so the zoom function is very useful in this software. Let's just move it back centre again. We have got a rotate option as well, so we can mirror the image. We can flip it upside down as well. You can manually change it using this dial as well which is another pretty decent feature as well of the software. Right, what else do we have? Resolution as well. So as you can see, we've got various resolutions that we can use here. So we can go 640 by 480. We can go all the way up to 3264 by 2448 as well. It is an 8 megapixel camera. We've got the option to fill the screen as well. We can change the exposure settings, so you can do it through the software. You can actually do it on the camera itself as well. So if we just move the exposure up, so you get the idea of what it does. So it's made it a lot brighter. Bring it down, makes it a lot darker. Let's put it back into centre. We have white balance as well. So we're currently on 2360. So we can go as low as 2200. Or we can go all the way up to 7500 makes it look very red so if we bring it back down to to we'll, we'll go there 2200 uh, focus as well we're currently on auto focus so as soon as I start trying to move this dial it puts a tick in the box for manual focus so you've got control of the camera now and you can mess about with the focus settings but if you're struggling with that, just untick that box and it automatically focuses for you. And we have video filters as well. So we can go black and white, inverted black and white, inverted colour. We have grayscale, white on blue, yellow on blue, yellow on black and red on black. So this is currently what the camera looks like using my OBS software. Uh, I've currently got just my light on like the bedroom lights I haven't got any other lighting on which I tend to use on LBS so this is kind of the motion that you get on there if I put the light on now let's see if it improves the picture quality so if we just reach over grab the lights so so as you can see that's actually really helped with the motion from from using the camera uh, let's try and turn up a little bit more, see if we can improve it. 
it might make me very washed out now though. Okay. okay, so that actually moves really, really well. I'd probably need to do some colour correction on there as well though, because the light is quite bright. But it works perfect in OBS, it automatically appears in the video capture device, so there's nothing really to set up in there. So here's a quick breakdown of the visualizer. As you can see, it's got an 8 megapixel camera on there. Uh, Multi-jointed stand, so at the start of the video I showed you the three bolts that you can unscrew. It's got a weighted base, so it should keep flat on the surface, it shouldn't fall over. It's got the focus button, which is displayed as number one on this diagram. So once you press that, it automatically focuses. Uh, number two, this is what I wasn't sure about at the start of the review. So the S stands for static subject. So that should be if you're trying to focus on a sheet of paper or a book. Uh, the C is for continuous movement. So I presume it would work better as using that setting for a webcam or if you're streaming using OBS or using Skype. We have the exposure toggle as well, which I showed at the start. You can use that directly on the camera or you can use it through the software and mess about with that setting. It's got an LED indicator on there as well. It's also got a built-in microphone as well. So I will do a quick test with the microphone now. I'm currently using the Snowball microphone to record this, but I will do a quick test with the microphone on the visualizer and you can judge how good the quality is. So I'm recording this using the visualizer microphone. So if I quickly run through the different options again, like I've just done with the snowball mic. So it's an 8 megapixel camera, multi-jointed stand, it's got a weighted base, focus button, auto focus switch, exposure toggle, LED indicator, and it's also got a built-in microphone as well, which is what I'm using to record this. So the final thoughts on the product. Well, it's portable. It's powered by USB, it's got a built-in microphone, it's sturdy, you can fold it up when it's not in use. It does a really good job when it tries to autofocus. It's really compact as well, so it takes up a lot less space than the flatbed visualizer. The only negatives I've really got with it is that it doesn't come with any software. You have to hit the internet and download it from the MPVO website. The only other negative I could say is probably the microphone. It's good that it's got a microphone built in, but the quality is not amazing on it. And taking all that into account, my final star rating for the Impivo V4K will be 9 stars out of 10.